let's also look at an interesting scenario where we have the operator aka the service provider has the access to the consumer infrastructure how could that possibly happen we need to look at some interesting scenarios where we have set top boxes uh, smart devices in uh, customer premises known as the customer premises equipment and then we'd look at the technical report number 69 which is a precursor to modern technical reports by the broadband forum and we'd have a look at a use case set top uh, or a device which usually lies at the top of a smart television um, is programmable because the customer premises has to always update according to certain requirements which are coming from the uh, content provider or sometimes even from the uh, infrastructure provider Uh, these devices are attached to the particular service that the service provider or the operator is providing uh, these um, devices are in turn connected to uh, certain network elements in the service provider infrastructure through uh, secure tunnels some sometime there is a requirement for the service provider to rewire or uh, rehome the service on to different uh, infrastructure elements these infrastructure elements are on the network uh, side so it means there has to be an update in terms of addressing for instance and uh, reauthentication by these devices um uh, these scenarios could arise in upgrades uh, if there is a service failure or certain maintenance required all across the service provider would now push certain policies or an executable uh, down to the customer premises equipment uh, assuming that uh, the customer premises equipment is programmable and it is part of the uh, software defined networking community let's look at a scenario where we have uh, the network side on the left hand side where we have the um, northbound interface and then we have the southbound interface where we have the customer premises equipment the organization uh, is actually uh, responsible for the customer premises equipment as well as for the network elements on the network side we have auto auto configuration server that updates uh, in terms of maintenance failure or an upgrade uh, uh, and it uh, route it updates through the broadband radio uh, uh, broadband remote access service on the access side the customer premises side we have the uh, uh, digital subscriber link access module uh, which is uh, more of a customer premises equipment uh, which receives these updates through the uh, technical report 69 uh, recommendations which is nothing but a handshaking and update mechanism uh, to incorporate any code update uh, known as the over the air programming or remote programming for network element uh, for the customer premises devices now the scenario uh, that we could think about an operator programming the consumer infrastructure is some administrative change which is required by the service provider to be incorporated into the uh, customer premises equipment so the uh, programmable infrastructure is the cpe itself and uh, the uh, the problem actually is that uh, the service provider has to push appropriate policies uh, uh, to the customer premises through sdn mechanism for instance through an uh, open flow uh, protocol and in this case let's assume that there is a requirement for the cpe to uh, connect to or attach to an authentication server that has migrated so a new ip address uh, binding is required a traditional approach would have been uh, very hefty uh for instance it would have required the uh, physical replacement of cpes across all the customers uh, for that particular service or manual remote login by the service provider staff that at times would have been bothersome because the cpe um, would be remotely accessed for each uh, up upgrade uh, by the service provider staff or a lot of emails and telephonic conversation for the service provider staff to talk to the customer to sit on his cpe and do the changes uh, as dictated but uh, using the uh, tr069 specifications 
this rehoming could very easily be performed. So the programming approach is actually quite simple. That is, for an, for an authentication service, uh, changing the destination address of, of the authentication server. Uh, similarly, uh, this could uh, possibly mean that uh, um, IP address is being binded or in some other case, the authentication or hashing mechanism is also being upgraded. This could possibly involve a new kind of like uh, uh, multi-factor authentication mechanism uh, that has been updated. So this could be uh, the um, possible programming approach. Uh, what is programmable in this case? Uh, we just have uh, uh, CPE, which, which itself has the capability to download a software upgrade or a patch or a release uh, and uh, uh, recompile. Uh, the transition changes that we expect uh, are that a large number of uh, CPE devices could actually result into a reconfiguration storm if there is an outage event or if some new service pack is to be downloaded on all the customers. Uh, the advantage is very obvious and uh, it's very encouraging that using uh, the open flow mechanism, uh, it could allow the uh, management, man management processes to be executed much faster. This actually means that the uh, CPE equipment uh, would now be available to the user more for the data services, except for the reference, which is the same for operational opportunities by the uh, ATIS uh, community. Uh, we have another reference, uh, that I've taken from the Broadband Forum, uh, this uh, technical report 69, and it has gone through multiple iterations, and uh, you can have a look at it yourself.